If you learn to write songs, the world will open up to you. Being able to write a song is like having a superpower. You can make a crowd of people swoon over your every word, or you can start an entire movement with a song. Or, you know, songwriting could just be this little thing that you actually look forward to at the end of every day. You know, after school or after work or after you get the kids to bed. So whether you wanna write for fun or actually make a career out of it, I'm gonna show you a step-by-step -step method for songwriting that really works. And it's so simple that anyone can do it. I'm serious, whether you've never written a song before or you've written a hundred songs and you're looking for some fresh motivation and insight, this method will be super helpful for you in your songwriting journey. I've personally used it to write over 30 songs that each have over a million streams. But more important than the numbers, it gives you a clear path from the beginning, formulating an idea, all the way to the end, having a finished, fully written song. You can use almost any instrument with this method, whether it's a guitar or a piano or a banjo or ukulele, honestly, just whatever you have access to or whatever you have lying around. So no excuses, you can follow along and start writing music right right now if you want to. Throughout the video, I'm gonna show you each step in my writing process, then I'm gonna demonstrate each step in real time, and we're gonna write a song together. So you could finish this video with a fully written song. I mean, doesn't that sound at least like kind of exciting? I know that this video would have changed my life when I was first starting out, so I'm super excited for you. Now, this video is gonna be a bit on the longer side, but consider this a comprehensive masterclass on songwriting. This is the kind of information that experts are charging a bunch of money for, but good news for you, I'm an expert, and I'm giving you the information for free. So grab some water and an instrument if you play one, and take a deep breath, and let's get started. Songwriting can be broken down into four simple steps, and those are concept, chords, melody, and lyrics. That's all you need to write a song. When you write a song, it's super helpful to begin with a concept in mind. What is the song about? Is it about you? Is it about a friend? Is it a story that progresses over time, like the song Driver's License by Olivia Rodrigo? Or is it more of just like a singular idea like Hotline Bling by Drake? If you're thinking, where do I even start in terms of getting ideas? Well, I have just the thing for you. Here's a super helpful way to get unlimited ideas for concepts. I have a notes folder on my phone dedicated to song ideas. Oftentimes throughout the day, I'll write little notes down of things that seem interesting or inspiring to me. And I'll be honest, a huge amount of them are pretty laughable and just straight up unusable. But the important part is that I write down what's inspiring me in the moment. I can judge the idea later on when I'm working on the song, but strike while the iron is hot and make sure to get your ideas on paper no matter how silly they seem. If you're interested or inspired, just write it down. It's as simple as that. You can't depend on your memory because humans are flawed and we forget things way too easily. You think, oh, that's interesting, I'll remember that. Then next thing you know, someone calls you or you get an email and a couple hours later, the idea is just completely gone forever. This trick may seem like a little inconvenience the first couple times you do it, but it's way easier than sitting down to write a song with no inspiration and trying to figure that part of it out in the moment. Create the list of inspiring things throughout the day in advance, so by the time you sit down to write, you have a list of options. The more you do this, the easier it gets and the quicker you're able to recognize a good idea. And instead of a chore, this becomes this exciting thing that you do throughout the day. And you go, oh, that could be a cool idea for a song. And then you write it down. Very low effort for a huge reward when it comes to songwriting. Okay, so that's the concept or what the song is about. Let's go ahead and look through my song ideas and find a concept that we wanna work with. Okay, so here I have my song ideas folder on my phone. And usually before I start, I'll just look through and see what catches my eye. Some ideas are just one word, like this one that says delusion. I wish I gave you up for Lent. I mean, like I said, some of them are just straight up unusable. But this one, I'm lonely like an astronaut. Let's take a look at that. I'm lonely like an astronaut. Am I more than just an afterthought? To me, that seems like there's some emotion behind it. And I remember writing this idea down because I was thinking, I'm the third child and my siblings were born two years apart and I was born four years after them. So I was thinking like, hmm, am I an afterthought? And then thinking, what rhymes with afterthought? Astronaut. Astronauts are in space, they're lonely. And so then I just kind of landed on this little note right here. And for me, I'm gonna go with feeling like an afterthought as my concept. So now that we have our concept, the second step is chords. Chords are the foundation of your song. As soon as you have a concept, the next step is to figure out how to communicate that idea musically. How do you tell the story of your song in the language of music? Chords are so powerful because they can establish a certain mood. Let me pick up the guitar and I can show you what I'm talking about. So for those of you crazy music theory people out there, I'm gonna get really simple right now and you're just gonna have to deal with it. Some chords sound happy. And some chords are sad. When you write a song, you need to use what's called a chord progression. A chord progression is just a sequence of chords played over and over. Different progressions create different moods. For instance, if I wanna write something really uplifting, I might do something like this. Mm -hmm. 
Some songs that use this are Thinking Out Loud by Ed Sheeran, Let's Get It On by Marvin Gaye. I think there was a lawsuit between them as well. And Speechless by Dan and Shay uses those first three chords. So let's say you want to go a little darker and more melancholy. I could do a chord progression like this. A really oversimplification of chords is major is happy and minor is sad. You can even play chords that create feelings of romance. If you learn a little music theory or even just a couple chord progressions, either on guitar or piano, it'll give you a ton of freedom to write. A little bit goes a long way with this stuff and it doesn't take much to set the right mood. You can even use the same four chords for an entire song. Or better yet, you can even use two chords for an entire song. Tennessee Whiskey by Chris Stapleton is like one of the best songs ever written and it's only two chords. So all that to say, we have our concept, now let's get some chords going. I'm gonna play chords until I figure out something that I feel is communicating my concept of feeling like an afterthought. Or stuck in space like an astronaut. So something a bit more melancholy. I'm gonna record the progression into Ableton, but if you don't have Ableton, you can use GarageBand, which is free, or Audacity for PC people, which is also free. There's a bunch of free recording software out there, honestly. Or you can record the progression into your phone and voice notes, just so that you don't forget it. Or you can even go the old fashioned tried and true method of just writing it down on paper. But whether you record it in or write it down, it doesn't matter. What matters is that you remember it later. Do not leave this up to chance or assume that you'll remember something later because you most likely won't. Just trust me on this one. The reason I prefer recording it into Ableton is because I can remember the tempo of the song and the feeling and all that stuff, instead of just looking at the chords written down. Okay, so let me run through a few progressions and settle on something that I like. All right, so one thing worth mentioning is you want to record to a click if you can. As far as production goes, it's just going to make your life so much easier. So if you are recording in a DAW, I would play your chords until you feel what's natural and settle on a progression and then figure out the tempo of the click from there. So I was fiddling around with some chords and I kind of like this progression. So that tempo is kind of like this. So I could tap something like that into Ableton, figure out what it is and then record my guitar into the click. Okay, so it doesn't have to be perfect. I just need to have one area that I can loop over and over. Okay, so now we have our little progression. This is what it sounds like. One of the biggest upsides to recording your chord progression is that you can loop it. All DAWs have a loop function, and this way we can hear our chords over and over without having to play them over and over. It's super convenient and it frees up more mental real estate for you to write with. So we've got our concept, and now we have our chord progression. Before we continue, it's important to mention song structure. Right now, I'm teaching you how to cook foods. I'm teaching you the recipe for efficient, quality songwriting. But there's also the presentation of the food. There's a specific formula and a way to order the parts of a song that's designed to pull the listener through the song so they keep listening to the entire song. Then it's stuck in their head by the time they're done. So songs are typically structured like this. Verse, pre-chorus, chorus. Second verse, pre-chorus, chorus. Bridge, chorus. This follows a certain story-like format that keeps people listening the whole way through. I'm not gonna go into the nitty gritty details of every single section, but I do wanna give you an idea of the purpose of each of these sections. So the verses and pre-choruses establish details and move the story along, and then the chorus is kind of the main idea and the most important part of the song. So for example, in the song Shape of You by Ed Sheeran, one of the most successful songs of all time, by the way, the verses establish the setting and add details by saying, the club isn't the best place to find a lover, so the bar is where I go. He's using the power of story to suck you in, but all the details in the world are nothing without a memorable chorus. I'm in love with the shape of you is the main idea of the song, and it's also the most memorable melody of the song. It's the stickiest melody, meaning it gets stuck in your head and it stays there. 
So now that you know basic song structure, we wanna write melodies. My best advice for melodies is throw spaghetti at the wall and see what sticks, or rather, hear what sticks. Generally, you wanna sing whatever melodies come to mind and record them as you sing them, so if you sing something that sticks or catches your attention, you won't forget it. Once again, back to this theme of not forgetting things. This is how I write melodies. I'll just loop the chord progression and record myself singing over the chords. I'll sing whatever feels natural without worrying about words. I focus more on the way the melody makes me feel. We can worry about the lyrics later, but for now, we just wanna communicate a feeling. There's a huge tendency for people to overthink things during this stage, but I can guarantee the more you let go and sing whatever comes natural, the closer you're going to get to a memorable melody. A lot of times, your first instinct is the best for melodies. And if you end up recording, that gives you even more freedom to sing whatever you want. And then once you feel like you sang something that you like, you can stop and listen back instead of thinking like, what was that melody that I just sang? I can't tell you how many times I've forgotten a wonderful melody in the blink of an eye, and for that reason, I record everything. So now I'm going to listen to my chords, I'm going to sing some melodies, and I'm going to stop once I feel like I've got something that makes my brain light up. I don't have a great singing voice naturally, so it's easy for me to overthink this step, but you just have to sing like nobody is listening. If I allow any space in my brain for insecurity, all that's going to do is take away from the purity and the quality of the art that I'm trying to create. Okay, let's go for it. Down, check one, two. Da, 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 da. You just gotta sing like nobody's listening, even if it sounds kind of stupid. I would highly encourage you to kind of form makeup words as you're singing. Just gibberish. There's something about the kind of babbling made up speech that helps you come up with melodies. But I kind of like that melody that I was just singing. Over the chords like this. So I like that. As simple as it is, it makes my brain light up. And it's my favorite melody out of everything I sang, so I'm gonna use it for the chorus. And I know I forgot to record from the get-go, so all of my melodies were recorded, but don't forget to do that. Just record everything that you sing, trust me. Also, really quick, if you're finding any of this informative or even just entertaining, I would love for you to subscribe and give me the chance to teach you more about how to make the best music that you're capable of. And if you're afraid of commitment, I'll settle for a cheeky little like until you're ready for something a little more serious. Okay, at last, we've made it to the fourth and final step of the songwriting process. Lyrics. If you've done a good job establishing a strong concept and then written chords to support the mood of the concept and gone with the most sticky, compelling melodies you could come up with while singing those over your chords, then lyrics should be a breeze or at least significantly easier. That being said, I could probably make a whole masterclass on lyrics alone. There are so many different styles and rhyme schemes out there, it's easy to get overwhelmed and lost in the sauce. So my best advice for lyrics is to lower the stakes and rhyme if you can. Your first version of lyrics doesn't have to be your final version, and you can change things at any point in the process. Sometimes it's helpful just to get something down on paper and then improve it over time, but it's hard to get anywhere without a starting point. So just come up with some lyrics that match and go along with your melody, and also go with the concept of your song. Don't overthink it. So what I'm going to do is play my chords and my melody over and over, and try to craft some lyrics that are in line with my concept of feeling like an afterthought. Pro tip, the Notes app is great for writing lyrics down. Don't trust them, I've got to have a check. Looking and feeling good. Oh, that's the other light there. This could take a while and you don't need to rush it, but you also don't want to overthink and not get anywhere because you're trying to write the perfect lyrics. So now that I've got a working chorus, I'm going to go through and write a verse and a pre-chorus to establish some details and just finish the rest of the song. Now you can go ahead and pause the video right now and finish the rest of your song too, or you can wait and listen to mine first so I can give you a few more pointers before you go all in. Okay. 
Okay, so now that we've gone through each of the four steps, concept, chords, melody, and lyrics, and we've written a verse, a pre-chorus, and a chorus, we can finally listen to our fully written song. For the sake of keeping the video as short as possible, I'm just gonna play my verse, pre-chorus, and chorus. And we could just pretend that the song keeps going into the second verse and the pre-chorus and so on. So let me show you how the song goes, and we could talk a bit about it after. That's how it goes sometimes You're stuck under the water with no sense of wrong or right And I'd be a fool to try And open up the washer spinning circles in my mind I'm just too much sometimes was I on purpose or a surprise? I'm far away with just my thoughts I'm sitting on the rooftop of my house I'm spaced out like an astronaut Cause I feel like an afterthought right now I feel like an afterthought right now Cause I feel like an afterthought right now I feel like an afterthought right now I feel like an afterthought right now Alright, that's as far as I got. And I think I was able to capture the sentiment of feeling like an afterthought. So I like a lot of that, but there's still some parts here and there that I might want to change. Like for instance, I use the word sometimes in the verse and the pre-chorus and the line about opening up like a washer and spinning circles in my mind. I wasn't a huge fan of that, but I didn't want to overthink it, so I just kept going. All that said, the final stage of songwriting is refinement. Just listening through over and over and making changes as you hear necessary. Sometimes you get lucky and love it the first time, but for me, nine times out of 10, I'll make changes that vastly improve the song from the first version. So don't be afraid to refine your song. We're rocking and rolling. How to write a song. Okay, we got the backwards hat on and it's time to get real. I have two closing thoughts on songwriting that are really important to consider. One, I set the steps of my process in the order that I did because I think it's the most efficient, but you can write a song using the steps in any order. You can start with lyrics or with melody or even jump around back and forth, writing some lyrics here, tweaking a melody there, adjusting chords for more emotion. And I encourage you to find what works best for you and embrace the idea that people are different, songs are different, and it might look a little different every time. And that's part of the excitement of creating art. My second and final thought is to put your reps in. If you wanna write memorable songs, get millions of streams, and be the voice of a generation, you know, whatever your goals are, you need to write lots of songs to improve. Ed Sheeran calls it running the faucet to get all the dirty water out before you get to the clean stuff. In other words, writing some not so good songs to get to the good songs. They did a study on a college photography class and half of the class was graded on one single picture and the other half of the class was graded on the basis that they had to submit 100 pictures by the end of the semester. And then after that, they selected the top photos from the entire class and guess which group all the winners came from the group that had to take 100 photos. You can spend countless hours spinning your wheels, trying to write the next big song or the perfect song, but you're way better off trying to write a bunch of good songs instead of one perfect song. Every time you write, you improve a little bit, or sometimes a lot. But one surefire way to slow down your growth or stop completely is to get stuck on one song for too long. So lower the stakes and write lots of songs. Remember that it's supposed to be fun. Some people do a song a day or a song a week. Find what works for you, depending on what your goals are. If you wanna do it for a living, try to write a song every day. If you wanna do it for fun, write when you feel inspired. But either way, if you do wanna improve, you have to get your reps in. And remember, most importantly, stop making excuses and start making music. Cheers.